Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I have such an amazing guest with me. Her name is Regina, and she overcame leaving an abusive marriage, raising two children on her own all by herself, and navigating the multi-million dollar debt that her ex had left her. It was a journey to say the least. And after spending 17 years as a corporate turnaround specialist and guiding over $100 million corporations back to financial profitability, Regina expanded her business into an online space. She now works with online female entrepreneurs, guiding them to go into their, find their actual blueprint and activate their brilliance and turn it, in, blow up their income to phenomenal amounts of money, all by her guidance and her wisdom. And she's here to share it all with us today. And she's going to tell us a little about herself, what she does and everything that's going to be very beneficial to me, you and the rest of the world. So Regina, tell me a little about yourself and what you do. I'm really excited to, you know, hear a lot about you. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Very excited. So it's kind of like two stories into one. One is personal, one is business, but all me. So at the age of 24, at the ripe age of 24, with no formal training or education, God just kind of dumped me into the world of a corporate turnaround. Yeah. Never knew it existed, had no idea what it is. But when I found myself at the footsteps, at the doorsteps of that there is such an industry as helping people rise from millions of financial debt back to profitability, saving, you know, employees and saving their jobs and saving marriages and all that. I'm like, oh my God, this is where I belong. I had no doubt that this is where I belong. And also zero knowledge expertise of anything, especially navigating something like this. So yes. I'm 44. I've been doing this for 20 years now. And during that time, you know, I always say God is a funny guy. Uh, navigating people through this chaos at 29 with two small kids they were three and ten at that time I decided to leave an abusive marriage initially like a lot of women say I'm gonna stay for the kids I'm gonna wait until they're 18 right and and then I realized listen he's not a good husband and he's a horrible example of a man and to have a husband to my daughters like what what am I staying here for what what can they possibly learn from this when they right. realize it's nothing I said okay I'm out and I didn't just leave like I literally walked away in 15 minutes from a 13 year life. I put my clothes in a trash bag. Wow. The back of my, so I didn't just leave. Like I left like in 15 minutes, 13 years behind of a life, put my, whatever I could fit into the back of my truck, my, my, uh, the trunk of my car. And, and I left and I walked away from everything, a large real estate portfolio a home. I mean, I literally like walked away from everything. And I told my attorney, I just want the kids. And the punishment I called the exit fee. My husband, my ex said, if you leave me, I'm just going to destroy you. I mean, it was just, it was horrific. And for three years, he systematically just disassembled my life to the tunes of $2 million. Wow. So I was forced to file a chapter seven bankruptcy. But again, God is a funny guy. Like I'm working with people reorganizing. Like I don't know how to handle a personal bankruptcy. That was peanuts for me. But uh, it was just part of the process. You know, and people were like, how did you handle? Did you feel like an imposter? You're helping people reorganize. You're going through a mess. No, I didn't feel like an imposter. Me going through that experience actually gave me more strength, more wisdom, and more ability to connect to people who are going through that really connect. Right. So when I'm to people and say, look, I know how you feel. Yes. I wasn't just saying I know how you feel. Like, I'm in the trenches with you. Like, I'm going through it with you. Like, I really know how you feel. And nothing bonds us as human beings when somebody can look at you, see your pain, and see the reflection of your pain in their soul. Right. Binds people. So I got actually the advantage in what I was doing because not only did was I very knowledgeable, I just naturally have gifts, skills, and abilities that God has graced me with to know how to build businesses and lead people. Not only was that was that present, but now I really knew how they feel. Right. So I navigated all of that, cleaned up my life, got rid of debt. I'm in California, one of the most expensive places to live. Mm -hmm. I raised both of my kids. Just uh, They're now 18 and 25. God bless them and me for doing it. Uh, 100% solely by myself, financially, all of the things. And uh, after 17 years of working corporate turnaround, I realized that I'm getting to a place where my kids are going to be adults on their own, leading to colleges, all of that stuff. And yeah. I, you know, I'm only 44. I'm like, I want to live my life. I want to be happy. I want to be married again. I'm full of life. I'm full of excitement. So 
and working with restructuring companies, like up to 15 companies at a time, it's a lot of chaos, like 80 hour weeks. I mean, it's just a lot. This is yeah. not like online entrepreneurship. Like people are like, oh my God, I'm $5 million in debt. The bank is taking my house away and <laughs> the wife wants to divorce me and my dog hates me and my kids don't want to talk to me. You know, it's, yeah. a, lot stuff. it's a lot of stuff. So I... I just felt this God nudge that I need to go into the online space and work with female entrepreneurs. So, and I felt it in September, 2018 and talk about overcoming something. And in, in um, February of 2019, um, I completely, completely, completely cut my zero, my income to zero. Wow. That was like zero. I went through like, I don't know, 15, 20, $25,000 a month, something like that. Um, up and down. Yeah. But when- single mom with no outside resources and kids in private schools and cars and medical debt. I mean, that's a lot of money. You got to oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, literally one day woke up and it's zero. And the, the, the bills are there, that there, everything is there. You know, you still got to pay. Nobody cares. And I was like, I'm not going back. Cause I had the option to go back to corporate turnaround. I'm like, I'm not going back. I just, I, if I go back, it's only to keep the security and safety of money. And I think everybody, my friends, everybody were looking at me like, I've lost my freaking sanity. (laughs) You are 40 with two kids and you have zero income coming in, little savings because every single dollar one was invested into my kids. I was like, do I dump every single resource into my kids to make sure they they are healthy, they're intelligent, they're quality human beings, they're productive members of society. And that requires a lot of finances. Oh, yeah. We were in sports five, six days a week. There was no watching TV. There was no hanging out with friends. There was no hanging out at the malls. Like I kept them busy. That requires a lot of money. Oh yeah. Busy, you know? So all of, and I woke up one day with nothing. Okay. So what are we going to do? And it felt scary and right at the same time. And like, you're 40, you're starting from scratch. Like, how is this going to go? And I'm like talking to myself, like, do you really have a plan? I'm like, I have no plan, but I know this is where I belong. Right. And I just went at it. And then, um, really struggled to monetize online for about a year and a half because I was figuring out I come from a different background. Yeah. You know, I'm an introvert by nature. I know it's hard to tell. People don't believe, but I am. I love being the CEO behind the CEO. I love working behind the curtain. I'm good at what I do. I don't have to be front and center. I'm not the right. person with recognition. I'm so good directing traffic and making people great and successful. I really don't need the brownie points. It's not my personality. I just right. want to do what I want to do what I shine, which is making people great and their businesses. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm online and my system goes into shock and struggled to monetize for like a year and a half. It was really scary. I mean, no money coming in, all this happening. Very. And then something just clicked that I went from like nothing to like $113,000 in cash in six months, plus recurring revenue and things like that. I'm like, holy crap, this actually works. Wow. Yeah. So this was a long answer to a short question, but I think it's important for women to know, for, for men, whoever's uh, going to listen to this is that you know, God's going to place where he's going to place you. You don't need to have necessary tool skills and abilities, but if you actually move and go, things will line up. And then if you have to navigate through a challenging situation, like I did with the divorce, scary as hell, no doubt about it. But if you just keep going every single day, you will prevail. And then if you want to shift careers, if you want to make bold moves, yes. I, again, here you go at 40, right? People were watching me like a freaking train wreck. Like what's going to happen? Like, like a movie. They were watching yeah. me like a movie or how is this gonna end you know so it's interesting when you move when you trust that people ask me in the worst of your times in your divorce what what would you tell yourself now looking back what would you do differently the right. only thing that would differently is i would have more faith faster right I spent way too much time being afraid i spent way too much time living in fear I spent way, way too much time living in chaos if i knew now if I knew then what's possible now and this life and how happy and when people look at me, like there's no trauma. I mean, they're, they're like, really, you went through all that. Yeah. I went through all that. Yeah. I did all of that. But, um, looking back now, it was unnecessary stress and chaos. I could have been this happy then. Right. Because it's hard to see the other side of things, how it's going to work out. So we stress. Yeah. Have more faith faster. Right. So you were, you know, how did you stay positive? Like, you know, you went from being in fear. So staying in a marriage that was not healthy. And then one day you realize this is not good for me. This is not good for my kids. And then you, and then you went into this world that you had no idea what the hell was going to happen to you. Now, you know, a lot of people would be so afraid and stay in that marriage because of the fear, you know, how, you know, I understand how you broke through the fear, but 
how did you stay positive? Because it took a while to build yourself up. So, you know, how, what would you suggest to people? How do you, how do you turn that negative lifestyle that you were in and how do you, how do you gain that positivity? So high self-awareness, high self-awareness. So I surrounded myself with, um, I only have supportive people in my life. And if they're not supportive, there's very strict boundaries. And the boundaries are, you're just not allowed to tell me your opinion if it's not nice. And, right. and I really have no problem. This is my life. I decide what energy comes into it. You know, a lot of people I like are, that. What if I get, what if I'm a, what if I don't want to say something to my mom, to my dad, to my uncle, do they have an opinion? They only have an opinion because they think it's okay to give you their opinion. Right. My friends, like we have boundaries. They know, like, I just don't want to hear it. If it's negative, don't give it to me. If you have an opinion and I've told people talk amongst themselves, you, you don't have to be present. That doesn't really bother me if you say anything, but have boundaries. And, um, I, I switched to being more positive, not because I was positive, but because I focus on the action versus the feelings. Yeah. So we usually sit with, I'm afraid it doesn't feel good. It's never going to work. It's not. And we sit in it and we sit in it and we sit in it. I don't need to feel good, positive, productive, exciting, and in, in the trust energy yes. in order to take action. Those are two different things. People mesh them together. Yes, I they need do. to feel good. I need to trust. I need to be happy in order to do these things. No, you don't. I can be miserable and still show up for my business and do the things. I can feel exhausted and still get up and make a meal for my, for my children. Right. I can still do all the things. So if you really break it down to the basics, when it comes to our life, to our business, for some reason, we need to feel a certain way before we take action. But if you're a mom, if you're a single mom, your kids are hungry and you're like dying of exhaustion, you're going to get up. You're going to make your food. You're able to separate how you feel from what needs to be done. Yes. What's the difference in life and business? There is not. Right. And what I also did is I listened to personal development nonstop. I remember the, it was still the DVD. If you guys remember the DVDs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I had the DVD, the only, cause I left my house with nothing and really money was depleting fast. And it, even when I left, I was making a lot of money, but it didn't matter because the debt was piling on so fast. It didn't matter how much I made. It was scary. It was just riding out of money before I made right. it. And I had a DVD, the secret, I mean, by was Amanda Ron's or something, you know what I'm talking about. And I literally had the secret playing on my DVD in the background, swear to God, for months, almost 24 seven, even when I was asleep. Just so that's embedded the, it in your brain. Keep yes, this. yes. It was nonstop, literally 24 seven. If, as long as I was in the house, it was on. Right. It would on repeat, on repeat. And I remember going to bed the first time and they talk about the gratitude list. And I was like, well, crap. Like, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Like, I right. just... I don't know. Like I'm out of money. I'm out of food. Um, uh, the kids are just exhausting me right now because they're scared and I'm scared. I'm like, I, and then I laid there and I remember thinking to myself, listen, he was threatening to kidnap your kids back into his country. You were able to get a restraining order, multiple, and they're with you. I mean, that's a lot to be grateful for. And yes. I was like, I was like, God, oh, thank you. Like my, with all this, my kids are with me and we're safe and we're together. And we got, and I was able to feed them today. And I have a bed to sleep and they have their own beds. They don't have to bunk in one bed. Right. And I have a roof over my shoulder and we have two separate bedrooms versus just cramming on top of each other. So I realized that, and I feel like crying now thinking back, mm -hmm. I realized that when it seemed hopeless, there was a lot to be grateful for. Right. And yes. then I was like, okay, so the kids are with me. The kids are safe. We're not sleeping like, a, you know, under a bridge somewhere in a bar in a shoe box. We ate today. Um, I, I have, I have income coming in yeah. Maybe it's not enough to sustain, to sustain it, but I'm able to pay for rent. I'm able to put food, gas in the car. So the list got bigger and bigger until everything shifted. But the biggest reason, the point I want to come across is because, because I constantly took action versus sitting in my feelings. Yes. I was able to shift it. I don't need to, if you can really understand that you don't need to feel good to move forward and take action, the game will change in life and in business. I get that. I understand that. And I agree with you. And that's a very good point because so many times we let our emotions overcome us. And that's what puts us into this big dump, this hole. And then people can't excel because they're in this dump. They're in this hole because they're letting their emotions rule their lives. And 
you know, if we separate it and we do the things we need to do in order to succeed, and then we work on our emotions, but we, we do it separately, two different, you know, one on the left, one on the right, eventually everything will come together. But if you want to succeed, you have to learn how to separate the two, just like doctors and people who work in, 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 in areas where it's very emotional, like assistant living, they have to learn how to separate their emotions and do their job. Because when you're in, you have, in order to succeed, you have to be able to separate the two. And I think that's an excellent point that you made, because that's, I think, a big mistake that so many people do. Now you said within tw six to 12 months, you made 113,000 after struggling and not making money for a while. Yeah. Six months, 113 K in cash. Yeah. I just, I just figured it out. I just now, figured it out. There was how a lot did you do that? Oh, a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And ultimately when we come into the online space, we, the imposter syndrome, we look at everybody else and what am I missing? What's wrong with me? All of the stuff we do, just all of the things. Yeah. We do. And then I realized, wait a minute. You've got more time in the trenches than most of these coaches in the online space. Half of them are not even half of your age. Like, what do you? And I realized the truth of what I'm bringing to the table. I just realized the facts. I'm like, okay, so I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I'm not going to focus what I'm not good at. And I'm really, 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 really good at strategy structure and leading people like this is why i'm a life and business strategist it's the same thing but i'm really good with the human aspect yes getting them to see the simple things getting them to see the truth getting them to see the facts stripping it down to basics processing feeding it back to so they're like okay this makes sense and good at structure and moving fast because my mind simplifies everything to things that are so stupid simple that it just moves it makes sense to people i yeah. can take it complicated and strip it down to nothing to where it makes sense and it's profitable i'm like I'm just going to really double down on the things that I'm great at and who cares what I'm not good at. Right. I just, and I honestly, and I started selling every single day because people are so afraid to sell. And what if I'm too salesy? What if people don't like me? What if, who cares? Right. People that are running a business and understand their business is about sales. They're not going to complain. They want you. They want to see that you're selling every single day. And right now in the online space, like I serve at a maximum capacity and I sell every single day. Zero shame zero shame. I sell multiple offers a day. I sell every single day. I show up and I started functioning really from a perspective of I'm a CEO. My job is to serve and my job is to sell. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. Period. So I stripped it down to basics. I got rid of all of the negative thoughts in my head. I focused on myself. I invested in hyper-focused mentorship rather than wasting my time. And free content doesn't, doesn't help people. There is billions of pieces of free content. Nobody's become a billionaire from that. No. Hyper-focused, got myself in a room with people that are way ahead of me to see what's possible and just kind of went crazy. And it just, things just went, things just went. Now, how did you get noticed? Because that's the thing. There's so much competition out there. Everybody is an expert. Everybody can do this for you. Everybody can do that for you. Then sometimes you'll look at their resume or you'll look at what they've done and they've done hardly anything. There's so many people out there making claims. I could do this for you. I could do that for you. I can make you a millionaire, blah, 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 blah. Well, how do you, you know, what's what, you know, how, how did you, first of all, how did you get noticed? You know, how did you have first people notice you from all those fakes and all those people that were not as good as you or, you know, how did you get noticed? Cause that's a huge market that you're in and to be able to get noticed is huge. And that's the problem. So many people are in the fields that we're in and they just get lost in the pod. You know, there's so many peas in the pod, they get lost. That's the biggest trick. First, how do you get noticed? You know, it's very interesting. So I'll give you a great example. Uh, when you speak to me, you know, you can tell I'm not an amateur. I'm not new to the game, right? right? Mm -hmm. The language, the energy, the confidence, same thing online. Right. Thing online. When I show up in the online space and I say the things that I say and I have the energy that I have and I have the confidence that I have and I have uh, and I say things, people are like, oh my God, that actually makes sense. People notice, people start to see the difference. And then as I started doing this, like my client retention is insane high. People go one offer to another offer to another offer and they start talking. Oh my gosh, she's, I literally had a client that I posted on my Facebook feed tell me, um, Regina, she said, I've, she said, um, 
she mentioned Tony Robbins. She mentioned Brandon. What is it? Bruchard. She mentioned. Yes. Uh, Gray, she mentioned all of these names and a few like bigger names in the online space. And she said, I've, I've worked with Marie Forley. She goes, I've worked with all of them. She goes, there is something different about you, the way you lead. I mean, this was phenomenal to be mentioned with those. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't yeah. feel like 1% of Tony Robbins. Right. But, but people notice when you show up, when you speak, and when they start coaching with you and they're like, okay, like you actually say things that make me money. You actually say things that shift my mindset. You actually give me a different perspective versus giving me surface level crap that everybody gets. But the problem is it's not just the standing out. The problem is people are not consistent. If you are really, really, if I am really, really good or you're really, really good and you show up once a week, you're going to get lost in a shuffle. Nobody cares. But if I'm in, on social media every single day cranking out content and there is a pattern of consistency, of intelligence, of, of, of profitability, it's like two plus two plus two people are like, oh my God, listen, she's been saying consistently the same thing over the last month, two, three, four, five, six months. And it's actually making people money. So like I do, I do a lot of Facebook lives and I've had people hire me one-on-one -on -one because one woman said, I've made money from watching her free Facebook lives. So even on the free content, I give people extraordinary value. Right. So how do you stand out? You give people value. A lot of people are lack mindset. I just had the conversation with the client. She's like, if I give them everything for free, they're never going to pay me. I'm like, listen, if people are not willing to give you their time for free, they're never going to pay you anyway. So what's like, what are you afraid of? They're not going to pay you anyways. There's people like me that are giving them everything for free because I trust they're going to pay me later. Who do you think they're going to buy from you or me? Right. Me? So how do you stand out? You give people everything, get out of the scarcity mindset. Because even if I give people everything, even if you give people everything in free content, you still can give them everything. Right. He was working with me for six or 12 months or two, three, five years. So what's the difference? You know what I mean? A free masterclass for 90 minutes versus having me in your back pocket for 90 days. Uh, you know, so you stand out by being highly consistent when your message is not all over the place. Right. When you sound like an expert, when you give people tangible, actionable steps and that they actually provide value. And little by little, people start to notice and they start to talk about you. Yeah. And then from the strategic part, leverage the testimonials, leverage the comments. I get a lot of comments from people in private. I take out their name and I leverage and, you know, and I still take the snapshot and I leverage all over social media. Be, be, a, be a CEO. A lot of people show up with an employee mindset. Right. I'm afraid to give myself credit. I'm a, give yourself the credit. If right. you're healthy, People change their life. Absolutely. Give yourself the credit. Take the brownie points. Pat yourself on the back. Why not? The more people know about you, the more people you help and the more money you make. It's a win-win. Right. Mm -hmm. So you would suggest that, you know, you do some free masterclasses like on Facebook where there's a large group of people who are middle-aged, who have money, who are trying to reach the same goals that you're teaching. And, you know, one thing I've also learned too, is that when you go to Tony Robbins or you go to Grant Cardone, they might do a great presentation on the stage, but when you're looking for a coaching services, you're never going to get them. You're going to get their associates, people who work under them. And those are not the people that you want. You want to hear it from Grant Cardone. You want to hear it from Tony Robbins, but those are not the people you're ever going to hear from. You're only going to see them on a stage if you spent, you know, 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000 to go there and see them see them talk but on a coaching level you'll never get them one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. yep 100 percent. and i actually agree with their structure right these men and these men and women invested their their lives 30 yeah. 40 50 years into acquiring the knowledge i believe that access to them should be that expensive i really really believe it and the reason is because um a lot of people don't want to invest the money but they want the the, the, the top level expertise it just doesn't work like that right doesn't work like that and not because it's wrong but because it, it's true top top level of expertise should cost money so if i've invested 20 years of sweat blood and tears doing my work you know missing a lot of recitals with my daughters missing a lot of sleeps missing a lot of time with my kids miss just working working helping people uh that should that that should have a cost attached to it Oh, definitely. So 100%. with people like Tony Robinson at that level who've invested their life into men, I'm sure they've invested millions of dollars into mentorship. So oh, 100%. I, yeah, so I agree the structure, 100% the structure that they, I think it's brilliant. I think it's the way it's supposed to be. If you want to listen to Tony Robbins on stage, 
you should want like actually him coach a, a circle of 10 people or private one-on-one you should aspire to get to a place where uh you uh you achieve that level financially or even you know some people invest through just just borrowing or whatnot because they still collapse time around the results they right still have time. so i love their infrastructure i do the same thing i think it's absolutely brilliant i think it's amazing now you do master classes, but what do you think about doing videos also? Do you do like, do you like to do YouTube videos? Cause YouTube videos are very big right now. Instagram is very big. Um, you know, TikTok is very big, but do any of those social platforms actually get you the results when you're trying to turn your own small business into something big, when you're trying to, maybe you're just making it week by week and you've put all these hours, all this in, all this energy that you created, you know, into your business and you're not getting the payout that you think you deserve or that, you know, all this, all these years of devoting yourself, does, does the platforms do anything? Because I hear controversy all the time. People say, oh, those social platforms don't do anything for you. You know, you know, j- you know, posting and posting is not going to get you anywhere. You know, is it true? Do, should people, do, should people make videos? Should people be posting? You know, does that get people anywhere? Or is it these masterclasses where you're live and you're talking are the key? No, I think it's a combination. I really think it's a combination. It doesn't not work. People just don't put enough effort. People, when people say it doesn't work, I, I guarantee you a hundred percent. If you ask them what's their output, it's minimal. People want to do a little bit within a lot of return. And I always yes. tell you're asking people to pay you their hard-earned money. Right. Tell me one good reason why. Because you showed up today and you <laughs> have to show up for a week. I mean, I have really hard conversations with my clients, right? So the, yeah. my clients are not allowed to come tell me if it doesn't work because I'm really going to ask them to show me everything they've done. And right. if it's, it doesn't work and they haven't done anything for a week, like we're going to have a hard conversation because I'm not here to cuddle you. I'm here to make you a leader, make you better, not to make you a great employee. I'm exactly. here to- leader so does it work of course it works it's the exposure but here's what doesn't work um if you are putting out on all of the platforms inconsistently yeah it's not gonna work if you can only have it in yourself to put something out consistently on one platform do that it's not about doing more it's about doing more of what works right on 50 different platforms and everything is half-assed i don't know if i can say it or not but no you can Everything is half-assed, so you're going to have half-assed results. We expect people to pay us because we decided to show up today. No, the competition now is getting brutal, and people are getting better and better and better and better. So what content are you posting? Are you just posting content that sells people, or are you actually posting content that serves people? I love master classes because I love this interaction like we're talking. I love the energy. Yeah. But also, business owner, when I'm thinking, doing master classes, I am collecting content. I am collecting questions from people that I'm going to turn into reels, that I'm going to turn into YouTube videos, that I'm going to turn into posts, that I'm going to turn into different things. I'm doing a masterclass. I'm going to give it to an outside people to scrub it for reels and things like that. So I'm not just doing a masterclass. Right. I'm a business owner. How can I take one thing and turn it into 10 different events? Right. You know what I mean? So I'm not just doing a masterclass to do a masterclass. I am doing it to build the community. I'm doing it to make the sales at the end. I'm doing it to create more content. I'm taking one thing and creating almost a month's worth of content. So am I really doing a masterclass? You see what I mean? I understand what you're taking. You're you're doing a masterclass, but yet you're taking that masterclass and you're absorbing the people who are interacting with you, seeing what they're interested. Then you're turning, you're taking clips from the masterclass and then you're breaking it down and then you're putting it on there, teaching them small segments, but just giving them a snippet of what they can learn if they invest in your service. Yeah. And I'm taking the masterclass and uh, uh, now I've done so many, I love doing free masterclasses. I don't mind it. Like I don't have scarcity mindset. I will teach, I've literally did a masterclass last week and I swear to you, people messaged me said like, why did you do it free? I would have paid you because wow. it was value. Absolutely. I do give value. I don't do a little bit. I literally teach the how people into inside the masterclass. I don't want to take your time and not give you anything of value and tangible. Like I don't rule that way. I think it's, it's misleading. It's, it's just not a, not a good way to do business. Right. Right. I agree so with I, you. Yeah. So I give people everything and they come back as I give them everything. They're like, if this is what I get for free, holy crap, what can I what get? What can I get for paying? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's understanding it. And um, also I do free masterclasses. And now I have a whole catalog of offers 
uh, of masterclasses that I'm going to batch and sell as digital trainings because Excellent. as I as you do masterclasses, you engage with people, you ask them to comment, you ask them for the transformation. And then I take the clips of that and I, I leverage the clips of the testimonials to sell the bundles later. And then I get to leverage the free masterclasses as bonuses, as pre-work for the paid offers. You see what I mean? Yeah. So are you rec you're recording your masterclasses on Facebook? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everything is recorded. I record everything. But again, you you see the the thinking of a uh, uh, an employee of mine. I'm just going to do a masterclass. I hope I get a sale at the end of it. Versus I'm going to do a masterclass and look how many things I've told you you could do with the masterclass. Right. I don't care if I make a sale at the end of the masterclass, to be honest with you, I understand the bigger picture, the long term. And it's very interesting. One of the, ma the masterclass I did last week, a private client who pays me, a global brand who pays me to have me in her bad pocket for six months, she said, Regina, I'm going to pay you $2,000 in full for your next program because I want to learn from you how to facilitate a community like that. Because she, right. me, she wired me $2,000 just to sit in, not even ask me any questions, not even get any support from me. Just, just to learn. Me facilitate a container though, because it's going to have hot seat style coaching plus boxer support, all these things. She goes, I just want to learn how you facilitate so I can do it better. Okay, no problem. Here's the link. You know what I mean? So right. uh, it's, it's think about the next step. It's not just people are thinking, what can I get right now? No, no, no. What can you do with it later? Right. Exactly. I just give you a million ideas. Whoever's going to listen to this. I just give you a million ideas what to do. No, I think that's great, you know, because nowadays everybody is trying to sell somebody something. And you know what? I think in your mindset, if you are thinking, okay, I'm doing this because how many sales can I make at the end? It's not going to be a good, it's not going to be a good masterclass. If you're going in there with the mindset, okay, how many people can I help today? Yes. It's going to be more powerful. Your whole person, you know, persona is going to be different. And the energy that you show other people, that is going to draw people in because mm -hmm. people are not stupid, you know, that, you know, people, you know, people can see when they're trying to be sold and they can see when someone is sincere and they're trying to do this because they have a passion and they want to help you. And you know what? You want to invest your money into somebody who has a passion, who wants to help you, who has knowledge, and who as is going to be your savior to profitability in the long run, you know? Yeah. And that's what you want. You don't want a, a person who's going to be fake because you know what? All these little, you know, gibbers and gabs and all these little, little techniques people use to try to make conversions, they might get sold once. They may get sold twice, but after that, they're going to be very cynical and skeptical on what they invest their money in because they've been burnt already, you know? So when they have good people who come out and they can actually see the energy, see the passion, see the truth in that person, see that, hey, that person really wants to help a person like me, they're more willing to invest in that person. Yes. And I'm happy you're saying this because so like I sell people know if you're in my world, you're going to be sold to like, there is zero question about it, but because I provide so much value and I really go like when we coach with people, especially like in the box or they have me like direct access instead of just me teaching them, but the communication, like they don't just ask me a question. I, I throw out an answer and I'm done. Like we go deep, like we have conversation. So when they see that level, that quality of depth of care for them, that I'm for their business, for their success, for their families, for their marriages, for their relation, for their, like we go deep. They don't even care if I sell them every five seconds because they understand. They never feel like I'm just selling them. They know that I'm for them. I had recently yes. something sign up. She said it was like a very quick plug in $250 offer, something super simple, strategically created. She said, I've got more in the, the first two hours that we started than I've gotten in a, in a six month, $20,000 program. And then she kept re-signing up and re-signing up. And recently we worked together again. And she said, my husband keeps walking out of the room and, she, and he keeps listening to your responses. He's like, you're the only mentor I've worked with for so many years who actually gives so much value information, regardless whether I paid you $50 or $50,000. Yes. Because if you have me, you have me. You know what I mean? So I oh, I understand. Like, yes. So don't feel bad about selling. If you are providing that amount of massive value and people will feel so my clients, they know they're going to be sold. So like I'm running something today, like there is zero, there is zero doubt in their mind. Regina is going to bust out like with five, seven different offers, but the value that they get prior to that, 
they don't even care that I sell them. They want me to sell them. What's next? Right. It's the, it's the quality before it's how you make people feel before. And the biggest issue is like, uh, how can I sell you versus how can I serve you? Right. If you show up with the energy of how may I serve you before, how may I sell you? That changes everything. And that creates trust. Otherwise, yes. Are tense. They're like, what is she going to sell me next? What is she going to versus, well, yeah, she, I'm obviously she's going to sell me. She's running a business. I teach my clients to sell all the time. So why wouldn't I do it myself? Right. But if initially they're like, I already know she's going to serve me. So I don't even care if she's going to sell me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you know, one thing I see so many people posting articles, posting articles, and, you know, in our society, so many people are on the phone watching videos, watching TikTok, you know, looking at pictures. Does it even make sense to provide informational um, posts anymore? Should people be looking, if they're really looking to make, you know, posts are great if you want to help people and give people information and, you know, but in our society, the way society is trending right now and the direction we're going in, is it even worth it for people who want to really make their business thrive? Should they be like putting, you know, informational posts to the side and really focusing on these master classes? And and what what about YouTube videos? You know, not just doing the master classes and and breaking it down to snippets and all the other stuff. Do people even just sit down and try to do videos, or do they take the go for, go straight to those master classes and make those those the videos and stuff like that, and take pictures and then put those on Instagram? Should master classes be the main focus of a business who's trying to get off their feet and thrive? You know, do they should they also be doing other techniques along the way as well? Yeah, I think it's a collection of everything. It's not one thing. It's never going to be one thing. Okay. It is one thing. It's like if you are go if you're changing your diet, for example, you're not gonna eat one food for the rest of your life. Just exactly it works, right? It's gonna be a combination. And as your health progresses, as your maybe m- muscle mass and all this stuff, I'm not big in working out, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Your needs, your needs are going to shift the same thing with your business. But again, the biggest thing is people are like, what do I do now? And then nothing gets done. Pick one thing and just go and then uh, fine tune, refine and shift along the way because business is very organic, just like any relationship. The needs of your relationship right now with people are going to change later and change and change and change. Same with business. It all works. Right. People just don't make it work. Right. If you don't know how to, if I give you a toolbox right now to build the most beautiful house on a planet and you have no idea how to use the tools, you're going to sit in and on an empty lot in dirt wondering why it's why not the house is not being built. Well, the house is not being built because you haven't learned how to use the tools. Same thing. We work, we have access. Think about this. Okay. We have access mm-hmm. to global platforms with billions of people. Right. For free. For free. People are walking around, scratching their heads saying, I just don't know what to do. I don't understand how it's possible. Right. And you know, know, what I find is, you know, when people come to me, the biggest mistake they're making is that they don't know who their audience is. And, you know, they, they, you know, they've created maybe a website and they've created, you know, their platforms, but, you know, the people aren't responding because those aren't the right audience. So what do you tell these people who are not, you know, you're looking at their stuff and saying, yo, hello, you don't have the right audience. You people who are coming to you are not looking for the things you are trying to sell. How, you know, how does that person shift? Like, what's the first thing they do? Okay, oh, that's not the right audience. Oh my God. Then what am I going to do now? Like, how do I find that audience? What do I do? Oh my God. You know, what do we tell those people? So one of the biggest things that I see in the online space, especially, uh, people people show up to make money rather than build a business. Yes. There's a huge difference between making money and building a business. Right. I've seen some people say, oh my God. Okay. Just like I said, okay. So after not making money in, in six months, I made $113 on cash for like, oh my God, I can make $113 cash in six months, blah, 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 blah. But let's talk about the stuff that happens before that. Right. Let's talk about all of that. I had to go through a lot of stuff. 
So I was focused on building a business. So people just want to shop and make make money. So they just make a website. They make a couple of posts. They're doing this. And they're just all over the place. It's not that even they don't know the audience. They're like, oh my God, this person is monetizing selling manifestation. I'm going to be a manifestation coach. Yes. Mm -hmm. This person is making money in a relationship coach. I'm going to be a relationship. Oh my God, this money is making money selling business courses. Ah. They don't know who their audience is because they can't stand still for five minutes they're and all over the place. They're all over the place. And because you don't, if you're all over the place, how can people find you? Now you've got pockets of people that are like in different areas and they're even confused by what you do because now you're selling manifestation tomorrow. You're selling, you know, cooking classes and then you're selling business classes, <laughs> you know, and then you're teaching yeah. people how to brush their teeth and then you're teaching them how to tie their shoes. I'm like, so what are you doing here? Because people are, they want to make money versus build a business. So they're so anxious to make money that they're all over the place. And people are saying, I'm confused. You know, this week you're talking about this. Now you're talking about this. Now you're talking about that. So That's what I said, the consistency in messaging, right? Yes. If I land on your page, am I going to see a pattern of consistency in your messaging? Or if I land on anything of your social media, is there a consistency in the last three months? If you land on my social media, I talk about business. I talk about life and business. I talk about profitability. I talk about monetization. I talk about offer building. I talk about infrastructure. I talk about building an audience. I talk about business, not making money. Businesses that make money. Two right. very different. People just want to show up, want to make a few dollars, pay a few bills, and that's it. That's not a business. That's right. Not. And if that's what you're into, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you have to accept it and acknowledge it. I just want to make money. Again, no shame, nothing wrong. But if that's the strategy, if that's the thinking, if that's the idea, then you have to accept the fact that there's never going to be a solid foundation. Right. This requires, so you can build anything you want on quicksand, but at some point when you put enough pressure, it will collapse. And if you're building a business at some point, there will be added pressure because every level requires a different set of skills, knowledge, expertise, and people around you. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, know what you want and stay with it. Stop hopping around right. and give it time to give it time to actually grow. I think that's people just unplug too fast. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. I believe that nothing works if you don't give it enough time and attention and yes. invest and, 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 and support. And I believe anything can work as long as you keep refining it, showing up for it and being consistent. Right. So your, your number one thing is tell these people, pick a niche, you know, you're all over the board right now, you know, focus on what you really want to do. And I guess that would go with passion, right? What that person truly is good at doing and what that person really enjoys doing. They should be focusing on that as their niche. Correct. You know, it's interesting. You said passion. And I, for example, like I thought, if I love to draw, like I can't draw a straight line with, with the ruler. Could I teach somebody to draw? Probably not. So yeah, you got to have passion because I think passion will drive you, but you also have natural, you know, you should have natural tool skills and abilities. So yes. I am naturally, God has installed in me natural tool skills and abilities to uh, create leaders out of people and to sh help them how to build businesses. It's just that it's a no, no brainer. It's a natural, it's part of my wiring. It's, so see what you're good at, see what, see what you're good at and see what you love to do. So when it feels like crap has fit the, hit the fan and nothing works, right. what are you, you going to show up for when it feels like nothing works? Right. What are you gonna show, so I love what I do so much that even after almost a year and a half of not monetizing, I was still able to show up every single day. That took a lot of love and passion and belief in God's creation of me, of what I'm supposed to, to do. That took a lot of faith. Not a lot of people would sustain it. No. We took and private schools and being in California and blah, blah, blah. So what did it take? It took passion. It took belief. It took faith. It took, it took trust to, to sustain it. So have something that you love so much that when you feel like it's not working and you just want to blow things up and burn into the ground, what are you going to show up for? when you feel like the sky is falling. Right. I like that answer. You know, I, you know, so many people, you know, you know, they are, you know, they have, they try to sell everything, but then when it all comes down, they have to look at what they're really good at. What are they, you know, what, what, you know, capabilities, what things inside them that they can give other people that would be beneficial and useful for that person. And, you know, and that all goes back to, you know, we have so many people like we were talking about, anyone could sell, anyone could be fake, anyone could be that. But 
when you when you want true success and you want to make money and you want to be able to pay the bills and it's not just about making money but you're you want to make money because you want to you want to be able to live but you know you also want to be able to do something that you know that you're good at and that will help others you know and then you have to kind of deep it sounds like you have to go deep into yourself and listen to your inner instincts and you know and like you said have faith and you know go with your inner instincts what you know the direction you know that may be leading you to a certain you know type of way of either business way of doing things maybe changing things you know because like you said everybody makes mistakes it doesn't mean that you have to close down your business you might just have to make some alterations you know yeah. and that's what yeah. it sounds like 100 percent. listen just like in life you know it's life is full of adjustments life is full of redirections life is full of ups and downs uh, it's not the ups and downs that take people out of the game. It's how they handle them. Right. Business is the same way. Business is up and down. I think, uh, you know, there is an illusion that business, once you figure it out, it's smooth sailing. Bus business is up and down because business is people and money. Right. Business only consists of, if you really drill it down to basic basics, every single business on this planet, even the nonprofit, consists of only two things, people and money. Right. That sounds so simple. It is that simple. Every single business, I don't care where you are on the planet, what you're selling, how you're selling it, it consists of two people, of two things, people and money. Right. Without either one, you don't have a business. Everything else is just a, a, a line item. Right. So how are we going to handle people that want to give you money? Right. And why would they want to give it to you? That's it. Now, you know, so many people invest tens of thousands of dollars in websites and making pretty websites, you know, is that a waste of money? Do you, do you really need that pretty website or you just need a website that gets to the point and, and, you know, really provides the information that you need? Because sometimes I feel people get gypped, you know, people spend all this money on, a, on an amazing website, but they're not getting any traffic. They're not making any money off of it. You know, is it really about the website or is it really about you getting out there and showing people what you have, what the abilities that you got and that you can provide to others to help them what in whatever niche you're in? So I don't know if I made a single dollar with my website. My website <laughs> online, uh, my, my website is much more professional than uh, my online is more like presence, more like casual. Um, uh, I don't think I made any money, um, with a single dollar, I believe. Okay. So website, okay. People do it for a wrong reason. People create the website because they think it's going to make the sales. A website is just a tool. Yes. How do you use it? Do you drive people to the website? Do you create traffic? Do you do paid ads? Do you, what do you, what do you do with the website? It's just a tool. They think website is the monetization machine. A website is just a tool, just like Facebook, Instagram, and everything else. Yes. Use it. That's all. Do you need a pretty website? Again, I haven't made a single dollar with my website, so I'm probably the wrong person to tell you. But we're in a place right now where it's about the content, it's about the interaction, it's about uh, providing value. That's so it. basically, you know, to sum this all up, I'm getting that basically, you know what? Screw the website, screw, you know, all these little, little, you know, things and basically get yourself out there and show people who you are what you have, the abilities that you have within yourself and what you could do to help people in that one niche, not a thousand niches, but the one thing you're good at that could help one person or maybe a million people focus on that and get yourself out there. Show people who you are, what you have and make your presence notable. Yes, 100%. Make yourself known. And know that this is a long-term grind. This is a long-term game. If you're looking for quick fix, for quick fixes and things like that, if you're just investing in manifestation courses, you know, it's interesting. I want to, uh, last thing I want to say to that. Yes. I just recently, I said, because we talk about manifestation and people are making money and it's so easy. You can like rub a couple of crystal beads and some glitter and just money falls in your head. I'm like, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> people that are selling manifestation. Mm-hmm. I said, are you catching the keyword? They're selling you manifestation. Right. They're showing up every single day and selling you manifestation. They're not sitting in the room, bathing in a, you know, in a, in a bath full of glitter, rubbing <laughs> all the crystals, and you're just saying, oh my God, can I send you $5,000?
they're hustling online. They're creating yeah. content. They're putting out information. Some of them have a website as a tool. They're put, posting links like crazy. They're selling multiple offers on the same day. I said, are you catching like the, the manifestation is being sold to you? She yeah. Said, oh, that is right. I said, they're not sitting home doing nothing, waiting for you to give them five grand. They're telling you that right. this course is going to help you do nothing for $5,000. <laughs> catching like what's happening. She's like, I've never thought about it that way. I said, maybe you should, maybe it's Yes, better. maybe you should. You know, you're so right. And I've seen so many people fall for stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's sad, you know, people don't get it sometimes, you know, and, you know, even in- Going back to what we said, people don't want to do the work. No, they don't want to do the work. Everybody wants to be a millionaire, but they don't want to put in the effort to be a millionaire. And if you want to make money, you have to put the effort in because nothing comes easy in this world and nothing is a quick fix. You know, you can go into any industry. We could talk about millions of topics. Nothing is quick. Things take time. And everybody that has been a success, a true success has worked for their success. It hasn't been handed on over a plate. 100%. And also, if you haven't gone through the trials, if you've never navigated anything challenging, if you've never really built anything from scratch or from negative millions like I've had, what can you possibly teach somebody else if you really think about this? Right. What can you possibly teach them? Nothing. Right. Nothing. You've got no grit. You've got no skill. You've got no personality. You've got no qualifications and, and you're not getting paid. What can you possibly teach somebody? Exactly. So when you, when you go through the trenches, when you go through these things, when you go through the hustle, when you go through the grind, you know, I love the story when Tony Robbins talks about, listen, my first event, it was like, uh, what was it? He rented a room for like a few thousand people, a few hundred and 50 people showed up. <laughs> and that's usually what happens in the beginning, you know? And I bet you Tony Robbins talked to them like there was 50,000. Yes. And then the 50 people are now turning into millions of people for watching him online because he was able to speak to the 50 without shame and embarrassment like it's 50,000. Yes. He gets to talk to 50 because people are like, oh my God, only two people showed up and then this is embarrassing and people are, I said, I don't care if one person shows up. You talk to them like they're a million and they're going to stay with you for the rest of your life as a client. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. So quick story. I remember doing a masterclass on Zoom and like, Five people signed up and two or three people showed up. I was so embarrassed. I nailed the masterclass. I'm like, I'm going to do this thing. If it kills me, I'm going to do this embarrassed. And like <laughs> one, person, and one person bought and then another person bought and then another person bought because I took everything aside and I said, I'm going to be here for this person. They're giving me an hour of their time. How shameful of me if I don't give them the respect back and give them in my heart and soul exactly as I promised. If I cannot talk to, if you cannot talk to one person like there is a million, you will never get to a million. Right. Got to be able to start some. Okay. It's a, such a good, I mean, I can go for hours on this. It's a great conversation, but you get the idea. Oh, I, I totally get the idea. And you know, when you're saying this, I'm thinking about a friend who did the same thing you did. And this person started out, you know, he said that he started out in libraries. He did anywhere he could get anything, you know, to tell his story. And he had a, he was well-educated, had a great story, you know, and it all intertwined. And he started out doing two, three people came, 15 people came, 20 people came. Now he turns down offers because he just doesn't have enough of time, you know, to, to do all these different, you know, presentations where hundreds and thousands of people come now. And it all started just like you said, two, three people don't get insulted. Just treat it like it was a million, you know, just think about yourself being in an auditorium and just put that mindset in your head and just go with it. Yes, because people want to, people want to, people work overtime and invest too much money into avoiding the beginning. Yes, I agree. That's a great way of saying it. I like that. Now, where can people find you? Where can they like learn more about you, learn about your services and what you do? And, you know, maybe tell us a little about maybe some things you might be planning for the future too, as well. Yeah, yeah. So Facebook, message me if you have questions. I mean, I keep things stupid simple. I don't complicate anything. Um, Facebook, Instagram, finally message me if you have questions. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't use it really much. I've got some stuff on it, but uh, Facebook is the best way. Um what am I doing? Um, 
I run courses, I run offers, I help you monetize, I help you build your business, I help you have a profitable, sustainable money mindset. I create, ma I run masterminds, I love masterminds. Uh, private coaching is always available. Cu I do customized packages. I'm just so obsessed with what I do that uh, I keep coming up with different offers that serve the community. My offers are really focused not how much can I make. My offers are obviously I'm monetizing. I'm not even going to hide it. It's, it's normal. But my offers are really hyper focused on making sure I teach you a skill for a lifetime. I don't do this thing where I work with you for you know for three months, six months, two months, whatever the container is. And then I keep you hooked to stay with me. Like I give you a little bit. My goal is to teach you so you never need coaching again. And people always come back. So I right. teach people for a lifetime. I kind of install different beliefs, I, different understandings, different systems. And at the same time, I teach them how to be a CEO. I don't teach you how to be a coach. I don't teach you how to be a certain thing. I teach you how to be a CEO, a completely different animal. Right. My job is to make you into a CEO. That right. mindset. So I've got courses, masterminds, private coaching, different different levels of private coaching. So to find, like I said, Facebook message me simple. You you can get simpler than I keep it. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? We I have learned so much from you today, and I think everybody in the audience who listens to you today is going to have gained so much knowledge. And I have to say, you know, I give you kudos because you you came went from a difficult. Um, you know, a event in your life and you turned it around. You didn't give up. You faced it. You beat it. You turned it into something positive. And now you're out there and you are crushing it, my dear. And you are helping millions and millions and millions of people just like the people who like, like when you start, you know, just like you, when you, when you were first starting out, you're, you're taking them from that point and you're bringing them to stardom and, you know, and at the same time, you're building their self-confidence, you're building their awareness, you're, you're helping them to become more knowledgeable in the business world. And you're retraining them not to think like a regular person, but to think like a business person. And that's just like we discussed before, you take the emotions and the business, separate the two you know, you're doing a lot of different things and all that stuff will make a person, you know, tons of money at the end. And they, they, so you could pay the bills and you don't have to rely on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know? So, you know, I give you kudos. You have a, a lot going for you. I think your, your, um, your, th your, your whole philosophy is amazing. I like how you do these master classes. I like the way you construct your ideas. Excellent. All excellent. And Thank you so much for taking this time to be on our show, to share this information with our listeners. And, you know, and once again, everybody, you can find Regina. Her name is right on the screen. It'll be on the bottom in our descriptions. And she's on Facebook all the time. Easiest place to get her. So email her, text her, message her, and don't waste your time. Because if you're looking to be a success, this is the person to ask. Thank you so much for your time, Regina. And I appreciate everything that you shared with us today. Thank you. I genuinely had a fantastic time. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.